What? When you use change the temperature. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, it's the, it's the four, the four hours. Yep. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Ready to go? Ready when you are. Special meeting, North Smithfield Town Council, December 2nd, 2020. Madam Clerk, will you lead us with the prayer and the pledge, please? Lord, assist with thy Holy Spirit of counsel all of those who have authority and responsibility. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corovo? Here. Mrs. O'Hara? Here. Mr. Vadney? Here. Mr. Beauregard? Here. Open form is so to. Rhode Island General Law 4246-6D. Uh, is there anybody out there that wishes to speak in open form? Uh, Mr. Ogier has raised his hand. Go ahead, DJ. There you go. Hi, can you hear me? <laughs> we can. Uh, hi, Douglas Ogier, 1984 Providence Pike. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, at the last council meeting, um, I had put on the agenda to increase signage when entering our town. Uh, there was a lot of good discussion that took place that evening um, and I just wanted to encourage the new council and TA to continue that dialogue and working with the state it looks like we could do this with little to no burden on the taxpayer and I just uh, hope and encourage that uh, it would make its way onto in a future agenda. Uh, thanks again and congratulations to you all <laughs> for, for winning. <laughs> Is there anybody else, Madam Clerk? Uh, Mr. Zosky. Mr. Zosky. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Uh, congratulations and good luck uh, as you take on the town's business. I noted one item in your agenda tonight that required my comment. Um, as many know, or some may know, I've been a board member of the North Smithfield Food Pantry for about two years. So please understand, I'm an advocate for the, the North Smithfield Food Pantry. I believe in what is done there. I'm also in that position, I'm also aware of the resources and the challenges that the pantry faces. It is my perspective as a pantry board member that in June of this year caused me, the then TA, to recommend against an increase of the town's donation to the food pantry during the final budget discussion in June. That recommendation has been criticized by some. I'm okay with that. Our job as leaders in this town has been to make good decisions with the information available to us. I discussed my recommendation with the pantry board and received their understanding. The Northmanfield Pantry is blessed to have a strong volunteer base and to date a substantial number of individual and, and business entities that are financial supporters. It is meeting the challenge of feeding all people who arrive at the pantry, even in this pandemic. Can we always use more volunteers and more financial support? Yes. But I'll repeat what I said in June. With the state still not having adopted a budget for fiscal 21, there is a very large unknown on the funding side of the town's budget. By taking funds from very important line items, we created a contingency fund to potentially rescue the school department from a huge budget shortfall if the state was to cut aid to education. The state has still not approved a budget, so we still today do not know what North Smithfield will receive for aid to education. In short, the current budget status of the town is far less certain than that of the pantry. I encourage that every dollar of available town funding be held to overcome whatever comes from the state budget process. In the meantime, the food pantry will do just fine. Fear not, if there was a need, 
I suspect every member of the pantry board would be present to request funding to meet the needs of families in need. For anyone with a burning desire, the pantry will happily accept donations from individuals and any entity that can truly afford to do so. My wife and I will make a donation before the year's end. We hope others will too. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm looking. Okay. Uh, there does not appear to be so. Okay. I know Smith Town Council sitting as the Board of License Commissions. Discussion by Council Board of that Board of Other Action on New Holiday License for JT Nanspa located at 900 Victory Highway. Mr. Hayes was, uh, if I read that correctly when I was going through my packet, they did not have a date on there for that taxes, am I correct? Are you talking to me? Yes, they are not up to date on their taxes. Oh. So I'll, uh, if, I'll make a motion to support pending payment of back taxes. Uh, so if they make a payment, if they pay up the back taxes, they don't have to come back to the council. But uh, approval is uh, pending the $1,521.48 in taxes. Once that's paid, uh, I have a motion to, uh, to approve their request. Any discussion? Yeah, the discussion. There are, there are also zoning issues that have not been addressed as well. They have not been final by the building inspector. As well as not being, as being behind $1,521.48 on paying the taxes over a three year period. Um, based on those two things at this time, I would I would not be in favor of extending or granting the license until even making a record that it's obvious that they're not, they're not in compliance. They shouldn't even be applying for a license in my mind, being that far about being uh, raised on the taxes. I will, uh, based on that, uh, you're absolutely correct. I did not see that when I was going to go to the packet. Uh, I'll be still my motion. All due respect, Mr. President, your motion is fine. You can go down, you can make a motion. In the, most motions should be made in the affirmative. And then you can go down and slide either to make it a negative motion. And then wondering what is a no vote, what is a yes vote. Okay, so. Uh, well, you're just going to uh, you, you, you make a motion to not approve, right? Well, right now, right now we're discussing the motion to approve. Correct. Okay. Okay. My recommendation was not approved. Yeah. Based on those I see, I see, I see, so now, okay. that I would not be in favor of supporting the, the additional license. Okay, I got you. I'm wondering how they are even getting a license being in bed when tax. It's supposed to be up to date on taxes before they can even renew a license. They're not renewing, they're applying, and that's just part of the process. Um, building and zoning have not declined, they just not have looked at it. So I'm still waiting for the building official and zoning official to look at it, to approve or deny. Right now it's stopped because of the collections, because of the three years. It's actually already in business, they're moving, they're changing ownerships. So that's why they're getting a new license. They didn't have a license before. They only had a business registration. They now want to be open on holidays, so therefore they need the holiday license, and that's why it's coming before you now. Okay. Yep. Yeah, through this system, um, they were they were contacted through the system saying that they owed three years in taxes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I, I think a motion was done in the past when it contingent upon uh, paying up the uh, outstanding three years payable, as well as awaiting a signed approval by the building and zoning official, Mr. Anderson. At that point, I think you would be, uh, the town would be well served to proceed. Okay, so I'll just add my motion pending approval from Mr. Anderson, yes. as well as a tax uh, uh, Paying uh, the taxes of the day. I think that would suffice. Okay. 
I'm going to amend my motion. Do we have a second? Any more discussion? So this is this is a new application. It's a new application. It's not a, a renewal. Old business, but a new a new owner is taking over. Correct. And the old business didn't have a license. They weren't open on holidays. The new owners are choosing to be open on holidays, so therefore they need a holiday license, not a business okay, registration. So based on what we're saying, but based on the old owner, Correct. the new owner is going to take over. Correct. You assume that they're going to take themselves over. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Roll call, please. Ms. Elves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Badney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Okay. Uh, decision by council on adult action on payment of bills. Anybody uh, have any questions regarding any of the uh, invoices that we need back at? Can I just um, ask a couple of questions? Yes, um, please. The um, MP O'Brien for Philadelphia and one bike track is 4300 dollars I can't. Yeah, I can't hear him. No. You have to turn your microphone on and speak. I heard something about $4,300. Yeah, Emmy O'Brien. Emmy O'Brien. Emmy O'Brien? Mm -hmm. What page is that on? Four. That was for some benches and a bike rack for the new take park that we're doing in the annex that's being reimbursed by DEM grant anybody else any further discussion? Roll call. Miss Elves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. A new business. The study by council board of action and appointment of councils. At this time, does anybody have any uh, anybody that they'd like to put forward as the uh, be considered the council? Okay. Uh, Michael. No, for uh, for council Yes. David. David. Okay. Um, I can't hear you. You're going to need to bump in the microphone. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, I would like to reappoint Michael. David. 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 And no. David. For um, our town solicitor. This will have a nominee, Mr. Pibbiosi. Is there anybody, any other names that anybody wants to put forward? Do we have a second? Let's take the Pibbiosi. Second. Mr. Pibbiosi. We have a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Discussion by council board of other action and appointment of assistant. Town solicitor. Does anyone have any names that they would like to put forward for assistant town solicitor? I would like to take this opportunity to nominate the uh, current assistant town solicitor, Stephen Ashamba. Second. There's a second. Are there any other names? Roll call. Ms. Alves? Yes. 
Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Badney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Discussion by council on about the action on appointment of the municipal court judge. Anybody like to submit a name or uh, a name for a municipal court judge? I would like to nominate uh, a current municipal court judge, Aaron Garrett. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? No. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Discussion by council, vote on the action and appointment of probate judge. Anybody have any names I'd like to propose for probate judge? I will nominate our current probate judge, uh, Mr. Robert Rossi. Second. Wait a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Badney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Discussion by council order on the action on school bonds. First one is a Stephen Turner Incorporated invoice number 3340. That is for $186. The motion to approve. That was uh, Miss Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Uh, the next is uh, invoice number 3355. The amount of $132.75, also signed up on already by the chair before by. We have a motion. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadme? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Next, we have uh, STB DPM invoice number 9001-8835 with the amount of $260. Uh, again, signed off on by uh, the civil body. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. And the last one is a Gavain building company. That is for invoice number J082480010 19. If I'm reading that, that's the amount of $1,903.18. Yeah. Is that the right line? It's $163,000. It's right on the front page. Uh, correction is a little, it's a little different uh, number on that one. It's uh, $163,330.53. Motion to approve invoice at 
Second. Mr. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Miss Alf? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Discussion by council about the action on hunting on town land, specifically the seat of swamp on uh, seat swamp land. Uh, Ms. Vadney, you uh, had to put on the agenda? Yes, I put this on. It was the discussion next time with the previous council, but it was in between our uh, last meeting and this meeting um, with the chairman of the charter of the um, Conservation Commission and on request that they had, and you can follow the email chain that, that they didn't do. Um, they didn't they did weigh in, and it's really something that the council needs to weigh in and see if, if we want to allow hunting on any town owned properties. Um, I, I brought it before the council so that we could discuss it and see where we wanted to go with it. It's been done in the past, but on a limited basis, and it was only based on. The chairman of the Conservation Commission granting approval. It wasn't any, by any, any of our ordinances or anything like that. It was something on, on our town land. I brought it before you, like I said, at the request of the Conservation Commission. They wanted us to weigh in on it. Um, the police chief had weighed in on it. You can see it in the email that the police chief had weighed in on it that the guy was licensed. He, he has a proper license. He is authorized to do a lot of the hunting. Um, one of my concerns that I had with this was that we're, we're trying to encourage, or the Conservation Commission is trying to encourage people to go out and use this land so that they basically can buy it and walk it and run the trails and hike it, whatnot, and everything. And then we're going to allow people to hunt on it. So now you're going to have people out there that are not familiar with hunting rules and regulations, they have to get so much information to buy, and should be out there in the hunting season. They're not going to know what the hunting season are. There was just a story. Last week in the paper about in Massachusetts where a guy shot two hunters and the guy shot the other hunter because he didn't he didn't realize it. And so I have a concern that on town land, I don't know if we really want to have that going on. We don't have that much open space that's out there in Chicago, but I would be I would be concerned about the liability of the town would have hunting that open space. I know in Barbara they do allow it on town own land, but Barbara has a lot more open space and a lot more state land that allows hunting. And their property, so it's something that I brought up so we could discuss it, see where we want to go. Um, you have the historical knowledge, uh, but doesn't it wasn't when the land was given to the town that uh, certain people were already with great father and that they wouldn't be allowed to hunt on that property? Or was that like I was not around when the seed of swamp was given to the town. I have no idea what that means. Okay. The restrictions on that property, I want to find a deal. Mr. Burger, if I may? Yes. Uh, seeing it's on the agenda, uh, I reached out to the town solicitor and said, you know, state of Rhode doesn't allow hunting on uh, state owned land. I understand the safety aspect. I don't hunt, uh, but uh, my understanding, hunters there are up in up in tree tree uh, tree stands. It's not like they walk around with their rifle. You know, they wait for the, the game to come through. However, uh, I asked the state where you're looking to the finance page to to bring in. Yeah, sure, uh, absolutely. Mr. Gurley, you, you there? Yes, I am. Mr. President, um, good evening, everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you for your support and my reappointment. Um, pursuant to the administrator's request, and um, I did look into this, I did a couple things. I, I had, first I had a conversation with the prior chairman of the uh, Conservation Commission, and uh, he indicated that um, the, the Conservation Commission had um, granted permission to uh, um, some private citizens to hunt on the town conservation land in the past. So that's how that happened. The, there's no uh, grandfather rights. It's just that the previous owner of this particular land had allowed uh, these private citizens to hunt in the past. So the Conservation Commission uh, did it, um, you know, until I guess the last few years. The um, I did check the statutes. There's a couple. Uh, council councilor um, Badney's correct. Uh, the town council is probably uh, there is no ordinances on the books indicating what the town's position is on on the um, yeah. 
he stopped talking to people. David, you still there? No. David? Oh. Yep. Can, you, can you hear me? You broke out a little bit. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. I apologize. There is, so there is no prohibition uh, to uh, hunting on town land. So it is appropriate for the council to weigh in on it. Um, and one final piece of the puzzle, there is some statutes on the books that indicate that uh, if you give permission uh, to a hunter or anyone to hunt on your land uh, without charge, as long as you don't charge them, then um, you would incur no liability for any of their actions or any actions that any injuries that they cause to other people. Um, not just hunting, it's allowed anyone for recreational purposes, but the definition of recreational purposes, including hunting. So I think it's really a policy, the long story short is, it's really a policy decision for the council um, if they want to continue to allow um, people to hunt on town land. Um, they have to have, be properly licensed, obviously, but it's about giving permission to someone who's properly licensed. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think that was the question that was raised by the administrator earlier today. Okay, Mr. Aguilera, can you hear me? Yes, can't hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So if we uh, basically, we could either just, we could decide right now if it's going to be hunting on the on town or not. And that's going to be that. that well, I happen. think you should be giving permission. Uh, as if you, if you were going to make a broad process, I would suggest that you, you do it by ordinance. But if you want to grant someone in particular permission on town land, then, then that's something you could do. I think somebody would ask for permission and you would grant it. You, we could ask you to create an ordinance to give the Conservation Commission or the Chair of the Conservation Commission authority, and that could be an ordinance in effect. If, if, that's what you, if, that's, if that's what the council wants to cho choose to do, I, I think if you're going to create an ordinance, we could we certainly could draft an ordinance that effect for purposes of discussion and maybe um, other types of um, proposals might come forward. I just don't know the answer to that, but the council certainly could do that. It appears that that's the way it's been done in the past. That the, the Conservation Commission is granted permission. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the previous conservation commission has a box of records of someone in this building, is that correct? Not that I am aware of. Oh, okay. Because uh, you and I had this discussion that there was a box which could get to it. We'll find it. Um, previous conservation commission in acquiring the uh, Phillips uh, Silver property, I believe there was a letter in there from this week. So I was told, so I have not verified it. That's why I wanted to see that box. Um, there's supposedly a letter in there where Mr. Silva had given uh, permission to Mr. Martin to hunt, and I would like to believe it was also part of the donation of the land to the town. So uh, we, we might want to be a little careful here if we take a look, if we can find that box of records and take a look through it. Uh, if it is indeed part of the transfer of the property, uh, that, that's something we have to take a look at a little bit deeper. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I tend to agree you know, with uh, Mr. Dine that um, you know, we're encouraging outdoor activity like that. We're encouraging people to use the, uh, our own space, and then we're also encouraging people to go hunting on that space and see what the conversation. I don't know. It's just anybody else have any thoughts on that? I tend to agree with you that that unlike Oregon and other areas where it's you know. You know, standards that not knowing the young people out there, you know, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a little bit. I brought it to the council's attention. I mean, like, I kind of weighed in on it. And you can look and see what this town does and this town does, and this one does, and, and they're all different. Every town is different. Marvel has a different lay of the land. A lot of their own land, about state owned management land that the hunting is allowed in the Rhode land, about the cultural management and stuff like that. There's, there's thousands of acres of land that the hunters can use. 
And there were people that had when they had something going on. And then out there was voice stuff, and sometimes it gets you get a little dicey sometimes. Um, I'm not I'm not aware, like I said at the beginning, this is one thing where you say that uh, that transfer of land it may have been situation. I'm not I'm not aware of that. I don't know it maybe I don't know. Either one of us know. Uh counselor, I, I haven't seen it. I've been informed that there was a uh part of the transfer stuff. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm not aware of it, and so I'm not saying you can you can do this already. But it it, it gets to a point where do we allow it here and we don't allow it there or we you know and, and we start to we don't have that much open space in how we stop it. We just picked up another 110 acres, we got about 40 acres, and then we have little little pieces, 40 acres, and then we have the swamp. The swamp is probably the biggest yeah. you know, thing that the town owns acres wise. Uh, it's not easily accessible, it's transfer. There are people that I don't forget what I'm doing in the past, but at least they had the courtesy to say. And we continue to do that with new people, and so that's all we did was to talk about it. It's just my personal thing that I would have to be in favor of it, but that's what counts it. Yeah. Anybody else? Can I agree? If I don't want to be using open space, it's something that I have to be using, you know, unless I have some sort of signage there as to if it's kind of open season or. Or everybody might not be following that, so we might not know what what to include in this. So I agree that if you want to um, push the open space, that maybe you're not pushing the open space. Maybe we can look into more and get more information. It's just put it here so we can, we can pursue that and get more information to find out what it in fact is on the swamp and in whatever other communities we can see maybe there is something that we can do that. That they're not accessible, they're closed during certain time periods, like they're wearing down and so that would be an option as well. But just to say, not last, but you can have time. I'm not a big supporter of that. Um, not that I don't have funding, but whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. 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 Okay, uh, moving on then. A discussion by council board about the action on a request to waive out of district sewer assessment for 145 and 147 Greenville Road from the sewer commission. Hello, my and name is. Okay. You want to let allow her to speak? Yep. Mrs. Stretch, just give me one second. Give my left off. Okay. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> His face was on there. It was just his name before. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Dory of the Sewer Commission is also on as well. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Shrek to speak uh, first. Okay. Ms. Shrek, go for Hi. Um, uh, my name is Sharon Charette, and I live at 147 Greenville Road. And uh, myself and my neighbor, Ken Page, are asking that um, you can waive the out of district sewer assessment. Um, we have been working on this for uh, close to two years now. And when we first started looking into tying into the sewer system, uh, we were stopped by the town and asked to go through the process to um, tie in as well as with our neighbors across the street. And um, in the course of the year and a half that this has taken, the three other homeowners decided to back out of the, um, of the project. So the only two people left are myself and Mr. Page, 145 and 147 Greenville Road. 
um, since we're not tying in through the town, we have to pay the entire amount all in one fell swoop instead of over 20 years as it would have cost us through the town to tie this in as a project with all of our neighbors. So we are asking that you waive the out of district fee considering how much more expensive this is all in one lump sum to both of us and that you know we've done everything the right way we've gone through the sewer commission i attended probably 10 or so meetings and um you know we want to do it the right way for the dem so rather than coming up with some other crazy way we're, we're we want to tie into the sewer system and the $5,200 is kind of pricey, especially when, you know, we have to pay it all in one lump sum. Can I add something that's in addition to, my name is Kenneth Page, I'm at 145. Um, that's in addition to the cost of installing the sewer and that's all due right up front as well. Right. Um, William Dory, um, Chairman of the Sewer Commission, 386 Great Road. Um, Ms. Red did come before the Sewer Commission a number of times and um, you know she was she was a stalwart champion of connecting to the sewer. Um, my hat's off to her. A lot of people don't stick with it as long as she did. And she was uh, very good in front of the sewer commission. Unfortunately, as she stated, um, three of her neighbors dropped out, which made the ability to connect as a group, as a district, um, impossible. Um, so the recommendation was made that she connect with her neighbor on their own. As part of their own um, out of district assessment, because they're going to be out of district, um, the statute or the ordinance requires a $5,200 connection fee um, that goes into the sewer enterprise fund that ends up funding um, future costs to property owners to connect and maintenance of the sewer system. It was the only equitable way the town had of distributing this cost amongst newly connecting people. Um, at the sewer commission meeting, as you can read from the minutes, there was a robust debate back and forth. Uh, one of the main concerns raised by myself was the fact that the um, we may be setting a bad precedent um, concerning the connection to the sewer uh, and the waiving of this assessment. The ordinance does not give the sewer commission the authority to waive the connection, um, but at the same time, um, we there was a concern that if this, the town council waived the connection fee that we would be setting a bad precedent. Um, there was one board member who was concerned um, that given COVID and given the cost of the, the project that we may dissuade some individuals from connecting to the sewer. Um, and I told him I would make the, his, his concerns known to the, uh, the town council, but ultimately the decision rests um, with the town council uh, to waive the fee. Um, as it's outside our pay grade to do so. I'm sorry? Yeah, if she speaks. <laughs> I can only do it if they speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the question I have is, that if my concern is setting that precedent. Uh, every, I understand it's a lot of money, but the next month, someone might take $15,000 and they spend and haven't spent it in five months. Would it be of any help, and I'm just throwing this out there, only one of five, one of five people, but it would be of any help if instead of waiving it, we allow it to be paid over, over a certain period of time, instead of a one month sum? Excuse me, sir, the, uh, the, the, the sewer assessment fee is paid over four years already. It's $1,300 a year paid in four annual installments. This is actually a time fee, and if you if you oh, it's, if you if you if you read your unofficial minutes, you're not you're not 
not in favor of not granting this request. They didn't run on the jurors that yeah. have responsibility to do that. Also the Things like this happen in the past. I believe this is when you remember the case where one woman kept having a right up on the table and the table. The we weren't doing enough. She still was replacing it. But she still had an assessment that was due on it and she wanted that later. It was way at that time. Um, based on the circumstances that are here before us, I have one question of, of Mr. Dory. The two houses that are tying in from the five that were originally there, are they the two at the end of the line or are they in the middle? Or at the beginning? Dependent if you're if you're facing the bridge, if you're on the road and you're facing the bridge, they're the two houses to the right. Um, as you have the on ramp and the off ramp to 146. No, from the, but they were originally. This is an old school project, and those five houses didn't get tied in, and I don't know why. No one can really find an answer why they weren't tied in. So it was pursued to have those five houses tied in, and it didn't happen because here's the back out said that we didn't want to do with that. These two folks are saying that we need to do it because they need to replace the septic. And this is a cheap alternative. But they are putting the whole cost to run this line. My, my question for Mr. Dory, and maybe he can answer this if the five people, and they're the last two on the line, but that line on five of those three houses, if they determine at a later date they want to tie in, and which I am tying to, like we do with others, if someone runs the walk the school line, and then they come back and tie in at a later date. But, but uh, this is different. It's not like they're paying for infrastructure like what happened in the Silver Fine condominiums or even Gators Park, where we waive it half of the fee, half of the thing to the developer. We did the same thing at uh, Silver Fine. The developer got $2,600, the town got $2,600. This is a like this, it's just the time fee, which they would have four years to pay uh, the fee. Is that correct, Mr. Dark? Yes, sir, um, town administrator. Um, we have let developers um, get a piece of the fee from future connections. Um, we did the same thing with uh, Gators Pub uh, when they ran a sewer line that met the town's specifications that would allow future individuals to connect. Um, there was an agreement that the town council reached with uh, Gators um in order to facilitate the laying of that sewer line because they were making an investment in our town um, in this particular case it's a little different because the sewer line is only going to be run for these two houses and connect to the main line uh, there is not going to be really an opportunity for other houses to connect to this particular line um, as with some of the other projects where we we've crafted um um, rev, for lack of a better term, revenue sharing agreements with the, the builders of those uh, sewer lines. So they can't recoup anything from their future costs. Well, they could do it. The town could do something. These folks are going to be buying in going back to the front line. So I don't understand that. I was asking the question. Based on based on what the school commission has submitted and everything, I make a motion that, that we waive the 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 location of 145 and 175. Good motion to move on that in second. Will we second that? I'll second the discussion. Uh, I'm just concerned about the uh, what happens when the next person uh, wants to wait there. They, they might have a very really different story as well. And, and I'm, not, I'm not doubting it whatsoever. I'm not doubting what you're saying at all. My concern is what happens when the next person comes along and says they'd like to have that so what they have to be because they spent X amount of money. Case by case issue. It doesn't set, it doesn't set precedent case by case issue. It is a case by case issue, but it's also the appearance of being fair, too. You know, that's my concern. And I want to give it up. I'd love to say, I'd love to wait. If we all want, but that, that's my concern right now. Anyone else? 
uh, another two households that we're trying to push them to the market is still not adding to the uh, discussion of these what the what the cost of each of them for their for the total time and the cost of each of them about uh so that would be a uh that would be a second motion okay no would that be uh would that be right a now you have a motion and a second I have, I have a motion but she what she's saying would be it would be, it would be uh, a second motion if this one passed i think that's i think it's a very good idea a good suggestion anyway Mr. Beck, would you be, uh, would that be amenable to you? I didn't hear the whole motion. Uh, what uh, Vice President House uh, suggested is that the two of you split the cost, and instead of it being uh, you each, you know, but the total, the two of you would only pay a total of $5,200, not $5,200 each. That would be acceptable. That would be absolutely acceptable. Okay, I think that's a win win. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we got to call the vote first. I'll make my motion then. Okay. So it doesn't weigh 50% of the cost in the time fee. Okay. Then it would be $2,600 based on, it, based on the comments of both Mrs. Sherrett and Mr. Fee. Okay. So uh, we have a minute on the second. We met. Uh, um, just uh, not to jump in here on your guys' motion, uh, uh, if you're going to amend it so that they're each paying 50%, you may want to also address the uh, the four annual installments that are driven by the ordinance at $1,300 a piece. So you may want to set the, the annual payment for each one of them to reflect the reduced amount. Yeah, so if you're going to reduce it to 26 each, Divided by four, so that they make the payments on twenty six hundred dollars one time, uh, once a year, four times. Correct. Yeah. So you have four payments. Six fifty. Six fifty each. <laughs> four payments of six hundred fifty dollars instead of thirteen hundred. Sorry. We already have a motion. We have. Sorry. It is. We met. I met it. Thank you. Okay, does that make everybody uh, everybody feel whole with that one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right, we'll I'm I'm just having trouble hearing you guys really clear yeah. throughout the meeting. I apologize. Miss House. Yes. Mr. Corvo. Yes. Mrs. O'Hara. Yes. Mr. Vadney. Yes. Mr. Beauregard. Yes. Discussion by council board of other action on property located at flat one, flat 91 and 92 owned by Munchen Family Trust. Mr. Badney. Mr. So President, this is then before the council, just the council, in the middle of June, that initially we've been dealing with. Um, we've been dealing with it. The building inspector has been dealing with it. The municipal court has been dealing with it. Numerous hearings prior to even coming to the council for a discussion has been there. Um, we have most of the paperwork we can follow. It's been going on for quite some time. Since July 2018, it's been going on. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. They've been cited with cease and desist orders. They've been fined. They haven't paid the fines. They haven't filed the cease and desist. They continue to do it. They've been cited for continuing nuisance as well as it becoming an unsafe condition for folks. Um, when we first heard this in July, in June, I should say, they were, there was a petition by almost every house in that neighborhood for blocks that were complaining about this issue. Unregistered vehicles, illegal dumping, um, a whole, whole number of issues. They went before the municipal court in November or the 18th of November, and he didn't show up for his hearing. And the municipal court judge took his fine, which would have been half of had he paid from five of it, he would have had to pay half the fine, but because he didn't impose the full fine on it, and 
upon questioning, he suggested that the town pursue this in Superior Court. And I think that I, I requested that in July of this year and was told that, well, let's leave it to the municipal court, which I would prefer to say to the municipal court, but it doesn't appear that a municipal court judge was in, is doing enough to protect the town in this instance. That's why I didn't go to the municipal court judge. Um, so it's, it, 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 it would be my life, it would be, it would be my wish that we pursue this in Superior Court, get a cease and desist, file a paperwork, get a cease and desist from the Superior Court that we have, that we have no standing on and shut this thing down. It's just continued to get out of control. It, it, it's just an unsafe condition for the whole neighborhood up there right now. And if the municipal court isn't going to do anything about it, and I think it behooves us to send it to the Superior Court and have a judge weigh in on it and say, yes yeah, or no, one year ago. And we're allowed to do that by the way, by the way, state law. Yeah, I don't see the point of sending it back to this one, but it's going to be. Uh -huh. I don't see the point of sending it back to this one, but it's going to be due to why. Mr. President? Yes. There's a gentleman named Joe who's trying to speak. Do you want me to let him speak? Is he uh, want to speak on this matter? I'm not sure. I believe so. He keeps trying to unmute himself, so I didn't know if you wanted to allow him to speak or not. Yeah, go ahead. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, what's your name, sir? My name is Joseph Lamagna. I'm an attorney. I'm at my office with Mr. Mungin. We are here to uh, participate in this hearing and to let you know that we're prepared to cooperate any way we can to alleviate the situation. Um, Mr. Mungin finds himself in an impossible situation where he had his business located at a site that he and the other owner of the site thought were properly zoned for a number of years. And they learned some time ago that the property that they were occupying was not eligible for rent to a third party, that the license that was held there was indigenous only to the owner of the property, and he had to move. And um, he really had no place to go. There was very little space uh, in town that zoned properly. Joe, hold on. Yes, sir. His phone keeps going like this, so it's making it really hard to understand what he's saying, and then we're having, it's hard for me to get it on the microphone anyway. That's a little bit of both. All right, Joe, can you try again? I'll be even more brief. I, I, we're here to, to indicate that we will cooperate fully. We'd really like some help if we could get some from the zoning board, the planning board, anybody that could assist us in finding a proper industri properly industrialized zone uh, for this business. Um, it, it, it's a business that enjoys an, uh, a very good reputation. It's a five-star rated business. Um, they're a substantial taxpayer. They want to stay in town. Uh, we just need a little help in, in, in finding a spot. And Mr. Munger has been searching for years for a properly zoned industrial spot for this business. It's not the job of the, the government to uh, to help Mr. Munger find another location. I mean, He's been, no, in, he's, been by, well, he's been in violation for a long time. And the people that live in that area, that just, that's just very unfair to those people. And, and that's my concern right now. My concern is the people that live in the vicinity of Mr. Lundgren's operation, more so than Mr. Lundgren, if I can be frank. So when you say that he's willing to, uh, put, to put this to rest and, get this, uh, and help us out with this, so what is he willing to do? What, what can we do? What would he want to do in the immediate future? Well, I think in the immediate future that, that he will attempt to work with the zoning board, the planning board, and, and continue to attempt to find a place in town that will support his business. Uh, but it, it's impossible to just completely shut down. He gets hired by municipalities, by utilities, by any number of, of uh, individuals and firms uh, to assist in disaster and you know power outages whatever uh, the point is we're here to tell you that we would like to cooperate would like to work with the town to stay in the town 
Why don't we do this? Uh, this is a suggestion. Why don't we? Um, we're going to. I, I would. I'm going to suggest that we go forward with Mrs. Adney's suggestion. And if, if we, if, as we're going along, it's not going to happen overnight. So as if we see that you start to try to correct the matter, we can always pull the case. We can always, uh, and we don't have to go through follow through with it. But in the meantime, we're I'd like to get get the ball rolling on it. We can always stop it as uh, if we see that you're making headway. My my biggest my biggest concern is that actually two things. One, uh, the violations is uh, almost two years old. Um, and probably more important than that is, you know, you didn't show up to the municipal court date. Um, so what? Why would we be led to believe that? All of a sudden, you know, you're going to end up uh, taking the violation serious and rectifying the situation. Well, the only answer I have for that is that he's hired me to assist him. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference, and maybe it doesn't. But well, it, it doesn't because you're not going to be moving the equipment and dealing with the neighbors. I understand. President, Mr. President, if you, you look at the last um, letter that you got from the building inspector to him on the 2nd of October, it stated that it's an illegal use of the property and it includes a dangerous condition. He inspected it two days in a row and from one day to the next, it got worse. It's not getting better. Drive by there any day. Any day of the week, drive by there. It's not getting better. I agree. If, if Mr. Longin is looking to pursue a different piece of property that he can move his business to, that behooves him to do that. It's not It's not for, it's not for me or you or anyone on this board to do that. If the administrator wants to help find a property, that's well within his purview to do that. It's not within our purview. Our purview is to, is to enforce the laws of the town. And right now, it's an illegal use of the property. It's not getting better. He's not showing that he's even trying to get better. Unfortunately, our municipal court, in my opinion, failed us in this respect, where they had the opportunity to address it with, with daily fines and whatnot, and they, and they flat out said, well, we're going to put the fine on here, but at the request, he said, send it to the Superior Court. So let's send it to the Superior Court, get a cease and desist in the Superior Court, and then we'll be able to, then we can do it, and we'll be able to do that way. We're not going to keep spending our resources on this thing. We, we need to get a concrete decision on this. If the judge in the Superior Court says, no, we're not being fair, then okay. But right now, he's not being fair. He can use of the property. We need, we need to address it. We need to put it there. I agree with Mr. Dyer. I agree. Uh, Ms. Dyer, you want to go forward with the motion? Is Mr. Wheeler out there? He should be. Yes. There he is. Go ahead. David, what kind of time frame would we look at to get this to Superior Court? Well, it's not about how quickly you get in. I mean, I would suggest. I would just ask the council that you may want to schedule a um, an executive session to discuss obviously any of the the process and procedure of the case. Obviously, this is outside uh, the defense of the town. This is a proactive a lawsuit that uh, you're discussing where you'd have to schedule, set up a budget, and uh, 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 select counsel. But um, the time frame. Uh, you know, now with COVID-19 and court calendars, you have a little bit less control over how quickly you get into court, but you can certainly file an action in due course. When you would get a decision, I, I can't tell you right now based upon the status of the court system right now. I would think, I, I think we should um, at least look into that and I could, Give the court, uh, give the the uh, council a more concrete um, advice. I'd like to do that in executive session, maybe at the next meeting. No, the twenty first then. Yeah, uh, yeah. the twenty first. The uh, okay. for the fourth. I, I don't know. The next meeting. No, it's not. That's the we're meeting at Christmas week. We should have a meeting. All due respect, Mr. President, we should have a meeting. Number one, this is one issue right here, but there are a number of issues out there 
legal issues that are pending that three members of this board should be going to speak on immediately, as well as there's an issue going on right now looking to get a settlement to finish up this project. We've already targeted the 21st. I didn't know that. We already targeted the 21st and we didn't address it, but we skipped over that in the agenda. But we'll get back to it. Um, that we need an action by the council on the 21st to finish it. So if there's nothing else, I would suggest that, that on the 21st, we have all of these outstanding potential litigation litigation issues so that you folks can go to speak. We, we did that two years ago that David came in and we went over, we went over those, there were at least a dozen issues at that time, Paul. And I think we, we called it down. I think there's seven or eight right now. And I think you folks need to be brought to speed. One of them is important because it, it, we're trying to resolve it before the end of the year. And we've already targeted the 21st, not knowing that there was no meeting. But we, we, we need to schedule that far out when we're discussing this stuff that when the attorneys can be available. All right, does that work for? Uh... Okay, we'll stick with the uh, original calendar. Ms. Aguilio, does that work for you? Uh, we have a in, yes. That you be brought to speed on those uh, hit, those court cases that are going to be Oh, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Mungin's uh, what, we'll, what we'll do with Mr. Mungin is now it looks like we get some time. So, uh, if you I'm making some progress and uh, we'll see what we can do. But right now we're gonna go forward with uh, what Mr. Van Lee suggested. Thank you. Okay, so we'll just put that on the calendar too, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion by council, one other action on abatements and supplemental bills. Mr. Jesus. This comes to the recommendation of the deputy tax assessor. There are abatements totaling $8,846.06. Council president, do you want me to do it by abatement and then by supplemental altogether? Yeah, by each one. Okay. All right. So they're basically self-explanatory. The first one is um, an error that was done in the um, camera system. But if you see the supplemental, there's a supplemental that over that um, takes care of that. Plus, it gets billed a little bit more. And then the MCS enterprises, we have to go back six years. Um, the land was recorded at um, 65.55 acres, and we discovered that it's only 55.7 acres. Um, so um, Jen went back six years and abated um, six years for the difference of those, um, that acreage. Okay. Do you have any questions? No, okay. And then the supplemental bills. The first one um, has to do with the um, Covia Enterprises, which is also on the abatements. Um, the CO was issued on 129, so there's a prorated bill. Second one was sale equipment. It was tangible account, account that was under assessed. And the third one is Ziegler, Warren, and Linda. And that's also a CO that was issued on 113. It was a new construction, so it was prorated. Supplemental bills total $9,666.75. And Payments of $8,846.06 and also supplemental tax bills of $9,656.75. Motion. We have a second? Second. Roll call. Ms. Elves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Thank you. 
Discussion by Council about other action and transfer of funds in the fiscal year 2021 budget for Public Fest food day. Ms. Ellis? I have to be on agenda due to the Sorry, did you say more funds from Pumpkin Fest? Transfer of funds yeah. from Pumpkin Fest funds. Thirty-five hundred. Yeah. Okay, nobody has anything else. So, so. Um, I'll, I'll agree with her because a lot of families are being sick now. This is the second wave. They're single parents. Uh, young children are getting calls now for extra help. And um, it's not going to get better for a while. So uh, there will be more of a need for extra help. But these people have never asked for help before. Okay, um, I completely agree with Ms. Allen on this. Um, it's, it's, it's a good gesture. It's not a lot, uh, it's not a budget buster. And um, I think it's important, especially considering the time of year. And uh, with the pandemic, a lot of people are out of work. $3,500 might go a long way. Okay, um, so, uh, I will have to take a motion then to accept uh, to transfer $3,500 from the uh, Pumpkin Fest account to the uh, food pantry. That's a motion. Second. Second. Anybody else have any uh, further discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadnick? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. <clears throat> okay, discussion by council vote on other action on forming five committee to display town hall residents artwork within town hall. Uh, what this uh, the intent of this is um, we did have a beautiful town hall. We'll cut the walls are bare. And I was thinking uh, the other day that it might be a good idea to uh, put an opportunity for local artists to display their work. Uh, uh, various works could be uh, photography, could be uh, painting, could be drawing, whatever, on, on the walls of town hall. And then uh, it, would, it would be a rotating basis. And then the, com the, the, the committee would be the one to decide uh, which artists are going to be displaying their works and how it's going to be displayed. And, um, and who knows? I, could, I think the committee could end up blasting into uh, maybe even an art artist field, you know, you know, but uh, it starts, I think it's very efforts. Start at this level, and we can put a few people in town on a committee, look for the talent, display the artwork, and uh, I think it'd be a great way to start and be a great way to promote uh, local talent in town. So, what I'm looking for then is to, uh, I'll, I'll, I will make a motion. I'm looking for uh, Mr. Rosie to set up a, uh, a resolution to form a committee. And we'll, we'll get into the details about what we have future date uh, later on, David. But that's the, you pretty much got the gist of it. What, what I'm looking to do. How many members? Uh, once again, that you know, I'm just thinking about it. So let's uh, we can, let's discuss okay. that. You need to know that. We'll look at that. Let's, let's have that discussion. You know, um, I don't know. I, I think it's a. Uh, I think I like it. I like it to be more of a laid back, uh, low, low pressure. I want the people on the committee to enjoy it. So. I would think it may be like seven or eight members. I think that's a good number. And I, 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 the few people that I spoke with about this uh, have gotten very positive feedback. And it's a great opportunity for the local talent. And like I said, who knows what it's going to blossom into? It's going to have to uh, become much bigger than uh, just the walls on the uh, town hall. But let's get started on this one. 
And if anybody's wearing what these um, paraphernalia, you have that you can put things on the walls to help make put them in. Oh, that's all stuff that has to be worked out. That, made, that can yes. be worked out. And I would love to see as time goes on, we have young artists and old artists. And sometimes people need one thing to learn from the other. And it's a dying. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just to take it one step forward, since um, no one's really allowed in town hall right now, maybe if they're also working or IT coordinator, that maybe we can have a screen on the website so that people can see the outdoor care and what it's selling it or bidding or whatever, we can open it up to the website and so on. It's growing already. Well, the, the hope is, is that come the springtime, people will stop to come back to the building because the, the, the people that work here, I know that they don't like looking at the bare wall, but that's the conversation. We can't even talk about that. We can't even talk about that. We can't even talk about that. We can't even talk about And so, what, what can we do? So, yeah, this is a good idea. Get, you know, it, it may not even just be residents from town, maybe the other people are trying to stay a lot of You know, so things, things to take from here. But, yeah, it would, it would eventually once we get people coming into the building, especially on the first floor, where the public comes to do, pay their taxes, get their permits, um, get their building permits and stuff, that's all on the first floor. And, and right now they're just all over the place. Right. And maybe you can uh, we could have the, uh, some of the schools uh, could have competitions as to who, you know, the, who the great school kids mm -hmm. or whatever they display the winners who display their, their, their eye in the yeah. House of Chambers or the uh, town hall. First of all, so it's a good opportunity for everybody. Yeah, decorate the building. Decorate the building. Just gotta get the people in it. <laughs> and we're working it. Like, I'm, I'm optimistic that come the spring, early summer, we'll be back. We'll be back to normal or, or some way close to normal. Closer to normal. So uh, well, let's, uh, let's take it. Like I said, this is just an idea that brought out. So your input is, is valuable and, and welcome. And so you think it, I think it may be people, uh, yeah. And then and, um, I would like to stress that the people on the board do not have to be honest themselves. They just have to be willing to, you know, sit down and talk to their audience and look at their work and make a determination. So if there's anybody out there that might be interested, you don't have to be an honest yourself in order to partake in this, uh, this new board. So uh, I'll make a motion then to Mr. Igbeozi to create a formal resolution so we can create this uh, committee of eight people. Uh, but as Mr. Igbeozi, would, uh, would it be possible to make the definition of the committee a little vague so it can expand a little bit? I don't want to narrow black people into one, one specific thing. I make it a little vague so they can, like I said, so they can branch out if that's what uh, the direction it takes them. Mr. President, what I'll do is I'll prepare a draft and circulate it to the council well ahead of the meeting, and that will give the council some time to think about it. And um, I'll try to, you know, you know, add some possibilities and let the council, um, you know, there may be other committees in the state that are doing similar work. I'll, I'll come up with something for the council's consideration. Uh, the only point I would make as a procedural matter is, uh, whatever size you made the committee, you always have to make it an odd number. You, you don't wanna make a committee that would have a, never be able to make a, a deciding vote in the event that people disagreed. And yeah. I know you that should not be the case in a committee like this, but my experience is you always want an odd number. Yeah, I, I agree with it. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking the same thing that it was going to be more of a laid back and that. I wouldn't expect that to happen. You're right. You have to think that. No, normally you would want an odd number so that you can have a decision made. But to be honest with you, we didn't try to be commissioned and we have a point to report for that it probably wasn't a good idea. The number of people with kind of, and something like this is, you're not going to sit there and not going to win. I'm going to go by one vote or whatever. They like it. They're either going to say you're doing a good picture or not. The number, the number, I understand David's point, but there's something more of a, um, a decision making board you want to know, but something like this, at least, that was my number. number. Right. I didn't think there'd be a lot of back and forth. It's just to review and make the same thing up. This is, this is suitable to put up because my, what I think is good art, and what you think is good art, and I think two different things, and especially today, 
freedom of freedom of speech and all that and everything we don't know what can come to us if the table can be put up there. So that's a motion, uh, Mr. Giozzi, uh, for the uh, resolution. And do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second. Any more discussion on this? Roll call, please. I just have a quick question. Did we decide on seven or eight members? Eight members. Eight members. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, Miss Alves? Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. Discussion by Council Board of Other Action on Forestdale School Cuts. It is a conspiracy uh, requesting that the bill for the invoice of fourteen thousand five hundred fourteen dollars ninety seven cents pay. Uh, we have the invoice right here. Copy the invoice in the back. The motion approved fourteen thousand five hundred fourteen dollars and ninety seven cents. So. Is there a second? So I have a second. Any discussion? Yeah, just so everyone's aware, this is an ongoing project. It's a hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollar project. Some of it's grant monies, some of it is money coming from the town's budget that we've appropriated for it. Um it's, it, it gets reviewed by by a um he's an architect that, that serves on that on that board. It gets reviewed by him, plus there's a line outside firm as well. Um, if you're driven by there, you see that they're, they're already working on it right now. So it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing project that they're renovating and everything. By us putting town funds into the project, they're able to access state money, matching state money as well. And so they continue to do that, and, and it's a good, um, good relationship that we have with the, with the Heritage Association to do that. Um, they work really hard to get grant money, and then they take the money that we give them and they try to. Maybe the bigger. So it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing project. This is an ongoing project that, that's been supported in the past, and that's why they did the motion. We've already we've already awarded the thing, so it's a matter of saying no. It's just it's a it's a, it's a, payment, it's a payment on it. And it's a progress payment on it. Okay. Yes, we have a motion and a second on this. Yes. Yeah. Roll call, please. Miss Alves. Yes. Mr. Corvo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Mr. Beauregard? Yes. That's not what I meant to do. Let's get the world business. Oh, I'm sorry. Old business. Set by council vote on that action. I update on municipal building review task force. There, there is nothing to vote on tonight, but I just wanted to give you an update that we are in the process of trying, uh, as, as some of you are aware, and this is something to get updated on next meeting, we'll have the attorney there. On site, outside council, because the solicitor was, his contract is conflicted, he can't be here for the time on this, on this case. Um, we're trying to, we're trying to resolve the issues before we get to arbitration. If we're, if we're doing self mediation right now instead of doing full mediation. Um, we're in that process right now. That's why I said we set a target date of the 21st. We need to have a decision from, from the contractor by the 16th so we can get on the agenda the 17th for the 21st meeting. So we set, we set that all up in motion. Uh, 
but also like the delegation come to you with the recommendation from the task force. The task force was meeting the week before that, the 15th or the 16th. Um, I know that Mr. Nordstrom is, is out there somewhere. Um, I don't know if he has anything that he wants to add to it as a chair. I have nothing. I have nothing to add. Yes, he has nothing to add. That's what we're hoping for. It's been a long road. We're trying to wrap it up. Um, there's some legal issues that we make you aware of and everything, and potentially that you won't be able to as long as we have. <laughs> I think we're right there. We're right there at the end of the, the, end of the day. Right? So that's why I appreciate you, you scheduling the twenty first of. We may be able to get it done. Okay. We have other issues to discuss the last time. There is no action on that. So now let's go back. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. Um, let's now. Um, then we want to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, we need to sign up.